Hey everyone, my name is Elaine. I'm the book blogger behind Utopia State of Mind and today I'm going to chat with you about some of my favorite historical fiction reads from 2021 and just kind of all over time basically. So I had this idea because I read four historical fictions that I really loved in 2021 but as I was reading like this list of books I realized that there some of these are from serious autobi authors so for some that have a history of doing historical fiction books I want to talk about some of their other backlist books I really loved as well and I'm going to talk first about my four favorite books though but you'll see you'll see if you keep watching the video the first one is Last Night at the Telegraph Club it's also the only one that I have but Last Night at the Telegraph Club like was I, it defies words for me because it was so good. Last Night at the Telegraph Club is, as I said, historical fiction. It's set in America in 1954 during the Red Scare, and it's specifically set, I think, in like um on the West Coast. I don't know if it's San Francisco, but the West Coast. And so, in during this time, uh, the main character Lily that's my name too, but Lily, she's 17 year old and she's also dealing with not only the Red Scare, so specifically the sentiment, the racism against um, Asian Americans all over, I mean, but specifically also Chinese Americans because they think that they are communist, even though they don't have any proof. But anyway, the Red Scare, but also the way that homosexuality and the way that queer identity, specifically gay identity, is also not allowed and also very heavily stigmatized. So the main character, Lily, is dealing with not only the homophobia, but also the racism and it's very much linked to the fact that like she's worried about being found for both of these things so I think both of these levels work really well in the way that she has to really be very careful about her identity and know that like she can't be out and proud and queer because it's very much dangerous for her and her family and that specific attention will also maybe cause like red scare attention onto her family and that will also be really bad for her family and for her family safety and security so Last Night at the Telegraph Club was a book that was uh, hands down one of my favorite historical fiction reads I've read period but also emotionally very difficult and I also love how Melinda Lowe like doesn't try to sugarcoat the times um doesn't try to sugarcoat the homophobia and the dangers and the red scare like she does not try to have like an ending that's like oh but look into the future and this is going to be so great like no there are legitimate very real c concerns and dangers for Lily and her entire family and I really liked that Melinda is able to balance these emotional dangers with also highs about feeling like you found a place that you love and you found people that you love but also like there is absolute danger to that it's kind of difficult to describe, but I think that Melinda Lowe does a fantastic job at balancing those two highs and lows or those emotional highs and lows in The Last Night at the Telegraph Club while also making a story about love and about hope and about family while also making a story that feels very historically true to the times. The next one that I want to talk about is Displacement before I talk about some like serious backlist um, historical fiction favorites. Displacement is a graphic novel. Um, and Displacement is by Kiko Hughes, and Displacement is um, kind of like a historical fiction fantasy. It has time traveling, and a teenager is pulled back in time to witness her grandmother's experiences in World War II era internment camps. She's in San Francisco, she's vacationing there, and she's like pulled back to the 1940s Japanese American internment camps, and where her grandmother was uh, during those times. So basically, these displacement periods they like keep pulling her back and forth um and then she finds herself stuck back in that time not really knowing how she can escape back to her time and displace made me cry like it made me cry big ugly tears at the end i was just like bawling at the end but it's a story about family and racism and love it i thought that the historical fiction element and the Japanese internment camps and the way that Kiku is able to portray not only the dangers and the terror and the stories about love and family but also like both of these kinds of kind of what I was saying for last night in the Telegraph Club the emotional highs and lows in that historical fiction setting and how they're very much stories about great injustices, oppression, wrongdoings, but also about these glimmers about connection and community and family that you can see as well. Um, and I think that 
Displacement really expertly examines how people, the different ways that people try to rebel, how they can manage to stay true to themselves, but also witnessing the changes around them. And I felt like displacement really honors and looks at the ways that you can find out truths and stories about our family and how we can honor and celebrate our culture and our past and our history and how we can learn from our history. I think that is a specific reason why I love displacement so much is that it also is firmly rooted specifically at, at the end as all of these kinds of emotional things are happening is what can we do with this knowledge from the past? How can we bring it to the present and also to the future? And now I want to talk about some historical fiction faves and backlist faves. So the first one is The Red Palace by June Her. June is expert at managing to balance these historical fiction mysteries. Like, The Red Palace is no exception. I think that still my favorite might be The Silence of Bones, but that's because that was the first one I ever read by June. And Red Palace is fantastic. It's another, like, court, um, court intrigue mystery. It is set in Korea in 1758 and the main character, she is a palace nurse and she just wants to like be a palace nurse. But then she um, is thrown into court politics when she finds that someone has been murdered, four women actually in a single night who are also kind of palace nurses maybe. And the prime suspect is her closest friend and mentor. So she's kind of pulled back into the mystery. There's also a bunch to do with her father, which is I think the reason why I love the Red Palace is that it really kind of look, looks at what we'll do for family and how we feel like we have these expectations and wanting to have family and honor them because she's kind of like the illegitimate daughter but also when that comes into conflicts of ethics and speaking out and like saying what is right that was a huge reason why I loved the Red Palace. I loved the court intrigue and the court politics and betrayals, but I think that was the reason why I loved the Red Palace the most. As I said, Dune Her is an auto buy author specifically for historical fiction. I love The Silence of Bones the best. The Silence of Bones um, is about, I think, a his The Silence of the Bones is about a girl who is uh, endangered to the police bureau and she has to like help the police bureau because in the historical fiction periods, like the male policemen can't like touch the bodies of dead women. So that's kind of her main role in that one. And also Force of the Stolen Girls happens where her father is like investigating this cold case and he goes back and then he goes missing and she has to go find him and figure out what happens. So now that I think about it, I think Forest of the Stolen Girls might be my favorite of the three. But if you love historical fiction mysteries and you also really love this idea of this historical fiction setting of Korea, you definitely should read all of June's works because they are all fantastic and the mystery elements in all of them are really, really great. And the last one is Luck of the Titanic by Stacey Lee. Stacey Lee is a fantastic historical fiction author. What I love the most about Stacey Lee is that Stacey is able to pick all of these periods and time like the American South uh, with the downstairs girl and this one with <laughs> Valora Luck. She is on the Titanic with her brother and uh, they're on the Titanic and we all know what happened to the Titanic. That's all I'm saying. Like that's the entire premise or reason why I loved Luck of the Titanic. I love Titanic books so much but I also really loved the story between Val and her brother her twin brother Jamie and their interactions and also the people that they meet because they are acrobats and so they meet a bunch of different people on the book on the boat and so I really loved that aspect like Val and her brother Jamie's relationship and also the people that they meet and then the Titanic story because like what I loved about Luck of the Titanic is we all know how the Titanic ended so there's a suspense about, you know, like you can feel the days and the moments kind of kind of counting down. And we all, all know that like when we're living in these moments, we don't know what's going to happen. And so it's super emotional how these characters, you can see that like their last moments are counting down probably. And so that suspense that like is in the pit of your stomach kept me reading. Um, Stacey Lee is a historical fiction queen. She has written like so many, I think six now or five or six. As I said, she is an expert at picking these time periods where people like didn't know about Asian Americans, didn't know about Chinese Americans and honing in on them. I think my favorite has to be The Downstairs Girl, which takes place in the American South. It takes place, I can't remember, the New South. And she works as a ladies maid in Atlanta. She also moonlights as an author of a newspaper advice column. So what I loved about that one is probably this, um, is that the downstairs girl specifically looks at Joe's experience as a Chinese American girl living in the South where racism is rampant. But I feel like the downstairs girl really 
expertly looks at this kind of model minority myth and the model minority kind of vibes within the American South at that time, which is why I love The Downstairs Girl. And all of Stacey Lee's historical fiction is superb. You definitely have to read it. There's like violins. Actually, there is one um, Secret of Heart Note, which isn't really historical fiction, but that one's really cool. It has this idea of being a perfume, like smelling perfume. I've read all of them and I've loved them all. Like seriously, auto by author Stacey Lee. It's fantastic as historical fiction. But anyway, these are some of my favorite historical fictions I read in 2021 and also just basically all of time. So please read them. Also let me know who your favorite historical fiction authors are down below. And I will see you in the next video where we chat about other things, probably historical fiction because I love it so much. All right, bye.